Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I know I haven't posted in a really long time. I didn't quite realise how much time had passed. I'm making a very concerted effort to speak a lot slower because I know a lot of people have said that. But I'll get excited and I'll probably speed up. But I am trying my best. So I thought I would do a very quick video on how to interpret the coefficients on variables in regressions. Now it is really easy mark it marks in an exam, but the problem is, and I found this a lot when I was doing econometrics, is the lecturers always say, oh, I'm not gonna go through this because it's really easy. But then everyone tends to have said that, so no one's actually sat down and talked you through how to do it. It's just this underlying assumption that you already know, and then people are missing out on these very easy marks. And I definitely found that when I was teaching the tutorials for econometrics, uh, people were missing out on these marks when it really isn't necessary. So I'm gonna talk you through it. So the first thing that I came across when I was a student that really saved me was this little table that I'm going to pop on the screen now. So you can screenshot that. It's out of Wardridge because I've already done a video and Wardridge absolutely saves the day when it comes to anything econometrics based. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go through a load of um, examples where I, I do different models. So level, 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 log, log, level, log, log, for example. And then I will really hit it home as to when you start talking about percentages, when you start talking about units. And really importantly, one thing I do want to just make a note of is there's a difference between a percentage increase and a percentage point increase. Um, and I find that students typically tend to use those interchangeably but they're not, they're not synonymous with one another and you do need to know the difference. So let's crack it, let's nail it and then let's get those marks in any future exams. So I hope it helps. Okay, so you've got this table here that I just previously discussed, it's out of Wardridge. So we're gonna use this to smash any of the interpretation questions that we need to do. So let's firstly talk about this section here that says model because you need to know what model you're using in order to know which one to look at. So let me write out a random regression on the screen. So I have made all of these numbers up, so don't think they actually mean anything. So let's pretend we've regressed salary on a um, certain amount of variables. So I'm gonna put a hat on it, because I'm gonna say it's estimated. And let's say that when we do that, the output is the following. So, so let's say that I've regressed it on loads and loads of uh, variables. I'm not going to write them all out though. I'm only going to write out the ones I want to talk about. So salary. In terms of salary, what is this? Well, it's in thousands of pounds. And then the variable that I've shown you the output for, because this is what I want to talk about, I'm going to say this is in years. So years of experience. I say it's in a job, for example. And these are the coefficients that get estimated when I run this regression. Okay, so the question may be um, that we want to interpret this variable experience going on here. Well, what we need to do is we need to look at the y variable, which is here, so this is always y, and because it says talk about the x, uh, talk about experience, this is our x variable. Well, why? What is it? Well, it hasn't mentioned in all the information I've given you. So when you're given a question, read the information. It hasn't mentioned that it's in logs. Well, if it's not in logs, it means it's in levels. So this is a level variable. And then again, we're looking at our x variable. And again, I haven't said it's logged. I haven't said anything like that. So it's level. So the row that we need to be looking at is the level level row, because this is a level level model. Now, just so you don't get confused, you could go and include a variable in here, because remember when multi-variable uh, regressions, we tend to have more than one. I could include a logged variable in here. So let's call it something, uh, I don't know, beta two, uh, beta two, I don't know, x two. And I could mention that the x two is the log of something. So if that was the case, when we're discussing experience, it's still a level level model. But if I then asked you to discuss X2, it would be a level log model, in which case we look at a different row. But we're gonna ignore that for now. I will go through all of them. So just ignore that for the minute. Okie dokie, so it's a level level model. What we then need to look at is we really need to look at over here. We need to look at this bit here. So the first thing I'm gonna point out, let's see if it lets me use red. Sometimes I've been having a bit of an issue. We need to look at what's in front of our x, so not the betas, anything else um, in that's in front of our x. And as you can see here, we've got a, I don't know if it's going to let me, 
use red is it gonna let me we've got a we've got a delta symbol but if you start looking at some of these down here we've got other options we've got percentage delta so we need to look to see whether it's a delta symbol or it's percentage delta if it's a delta symbol only what does that mean well it means that we're going to be talking about it in unit terms i will explain all of this and if it's a percentage delta symbol it means we're going to talk about it in percentage terms okay so what are we doing well when we get asked to interpret a variable basically what we're trying to say is well how would salary change if i changed experience because that's what we care about right we're running all of these models to try and work out um whether or not one if the experience variable is statistically significant but then also by what by how much what does it do if i were to increase experience by a certain amount what happens to salary and this is where this comes into play up here how are we going to be changing the experience variable so it's just delta x, so it's in unit terms, which means I increase experience by one unit. We're going to do, always do by one. Well, let's make that more specific to the question. What does it mean to increase experience by one unit? Well, I've told you it's in years. So a unit in this case is a year. So I would be increasing. So if I increase uh, experience, By one year because that is our unit term that's how we've increased it we then need to say what happens to salary okay well let's firstly look at what's in front of our uh, front of our y variable it's a delta just a delta so it means it only increases in units it doesn't increase in percentages and then you need to look at whatever's with beta to see how much it changes by well beta is just beta 1 well this is beta 1 that's 0 0.8. And it's saying to us we don't change it. So if I increase experience by one year, on average, key part here is put on average because it doesn't mean it's indefinite, on average, salary changes by beta 1. Well, beta 1 is 0 0.8. So salary changes by 0 0.8. But this is when we need to look at well, what was our salary in is in thousands of pounds. So salary increases by now I could say 0 0.8 thousands of pounds, but that's a bit that's a bit wordy. It doesn't really make much sense. So I've got 0 0.8 in thousands of pounds. Well, what is that? That's just going to be 800, um, 800 pounds. So if I, if I increase experience by one year, on average, salary increases by £800. And that is the correct way of interpreting this variable. What loads of students do is because they can't figure out this, what, what all this does, they'll just end up saying that experience has a positive impact on salary. And yes, it does, but you can be a lot more specific than that. So I know that may seem very, very tricky or complicated, but we're going to do so many more of these and we're going to get nailed. So that's a level, level one. That's how you do it with a level, level. Let's go and now look at a level log. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to go and do a random regression. I've not actually got data on any of this, so I've just literally made these up. So let's pretend we were regressing sales on a certain amount of variables and we're going to say that it comes out as the following. Okay, so we're saying that I have regressed sales and we're going to say that sales this time is just in pounds and I've regressed it on the log of advertising so I would tell you it's logged or they'll write it like this so this is the log of advertising um okie dokie so what's going on here well sales they haven't told me it's logged so it's level and advertising they've told me they've logged it so it's a log in which case this is a level log model so this is the row that we need to be looking at Okie dokie, right, let's look at what's in front of this x. So in front of the x, we have percentage delta. That means I need to increase my x variable in percentage terms. So my x variable is advertising. I've logged it though. So when we say talk about your x variable, we don't say logged advertising, it's advertising and I've logged it. So if I were to increase, so if I increase advertising, by now in this case i'm talking about in percentage terms 
So my one, it's not a one unit, it's 1%. So if I were to increase advertising by 1%, on average, sales, now it's positive, so the change is positive. So I can say sales increases by, okay, what's in front of my Y? Well, in front of my Y, it's in just a delta, it's not percentage delta. So it's in unit terms, not percentage terms. And then we look at what's happening with beta. Well, it's telling me what happens is that beta is divided by 100. Well, this is beta 1. So I need to do 1.9 divided by 100, and that's how much sales change by. So sales increase by, um, what would that be? 0 0.019 pounds, because our unit for sales is in pounds. So if I increase advertising by 1%, on average, sales increase by 0.019 pounds, or because it's money, you'd probably say 0.02, so 2p. So if I increase advertising by 1%, on average, sales increases by 2p. That's how you would go about interpreting a level log model. So the key here is you need to know that you talk about your x variable changing in percentages, and you talk about your y variable changing by beta 1 over 100. That's how you interpret this. Okie dokie, let's go and do a log level model and see how that changes things. Give you a random regression. So I'm going to have the log of salary and I'm going to regress it on experience. And when I do that, I'm going to pretend that I get this output. Okay, and I'm going to tell you that experience is in years. So when we're looking at our model, my y variable is salary, but I've logged it. So it's a log, uh, log variable. And experience, it's not logged, so it's level. In which case, I know I'm looking at this row here, the log level row. Okay, the first thing then is how are we changing x? Because we're always gonna, we're always looking at, well, if I change my x variable, how does the y variable change? That's the whole point of this interpretation. So what is in front of my x? Well, it's only the delta sign. It's only a unit change. So I need to increase experience by one unit. I can make this really specific. I can say that if I increase experience, instead of just saying one unit, because you'll drop marks if you say that, because we know what the unit is. The unit is years. So if I increase experience by one year, on average, Salary, remember we don't start talking about how log salary changes, that makes no sense. Salary, well what happens? Well it, it would um, increase, because it's a positive effect, by, okay, now what we need to do is we need to look what's happening with y. Well it's telling me here that y changes in percentage terms. So once we get our number it's a percent rather than a unit. And how does it change? Well, it's 100 times beta 1. So it's 100 times this. So 100 times 0 0.3, which is just 30. So if I increase experience by one year, on average, salary increases by 30%. That's how you would interpret a log level model. You're going to start seeing a theme here. If a, var if a var variable is logged, we talk about percentages. And if it's level, we talk about it in units. So once you get your head around this, it's nice and simple. So if I were to increase experience by one year, on average, salary would increase by 30%. Let's do the last one. So let me say that what we've done is we have regressed the log of sales on the log of advertising. And I'm going to pretend that this is the output. Okie dokie, so our y variable is logged, because it's told us that, and our x variable is also logged, because it's told us that, in which case it's a log log model. Now, you might get, have been told, you might even get asked, if you use a log log model, it's what we call an elasticity model. It's a fancy way of saying it's all about percentage change. Because when we deal with logs, we deal with percentages, and because they're both logged, it's all in percentages. Okay, so let's have a look at this then. X, it's percentage delta. Well, that doesn't surprise me because it's logged, and we always talk about percentages when we're dealing with log. 
it doesn't really make sense to say if we were to increase log advertising by one unit. We don't, log advertising means nothing to you, does it? Okay, so if I increase advertising by one unit, uh, one unit, I've made the mistake there. If I increase advertising by 1%, on average, sales, well, it's positive, so it's going to increase. Sales increases by, well, what's happening with beta 1? It's just staying as it is. So sales increase by 1.3%. So if I were to increase advertising by 1%, on average, sales were to increase by 1.3%. And that's how you would interpret a log log model. So that is how you would interpret any models like this. There is one more thing I want to make a note of because people tend to do it wrong. Um, let's just pretend, let me just say why is regressed on something. I'm going to do it in algebra terms purely because I can't just think of what I want to have it as off the top of my head. So let's say it's this. I'm going to say that y is just y. I've not logged it. And I'm going to say that x1 is a variable. It doesn't matter what it is. But I'm going to say that it's a proportion of something. It's a proportion. Or maybe a fraction. That's what that is. I don't know. Um, it could be anything. Like I don't, um, The amount I spend on something over my income or something like that. That's what x1 is. So it's a proportion. It doesn't really matter. So, what's going on here? Well, y is levelled, because I've not said it's logged, and x, even though it's a fraction, I still haven't logged it, so it's still a level, level model. So let's make that clear, it's still a level, level model, so this is the one I'd be looking at. What happens in our level, level model? Well, we increase our x variable by one unit. Now, let's have a little think about this, because when it's in years, it's easy, you increase it by one year, for example. But we need to think to ourselves, what is a unit increase of a fraction? Well, let's take a random fraction, right? Let's take three quarters. Well, as a percentage, that's 75%. Well, if I were to increase 75% by one unit, it has to go to 76%. That would be increasing by essentially one unit. But what is that unit there? How do we word this? What this is actually saying is if you were to increase from 75 to 76%, you've increased it by one percentage point. Now that word point there is very crucial because if you start talking about increasing it by 1%, we're going to start thinking we're talking about some other model going on here because that's what would be a level log model. So a percentage point is like, is this. So for example, if I went from 75% to 80%, that's an increase of five percentage points. It's not the same as increasing by 1%. If I increase 75% by 1%, I would end up with 75.75%. They're not the same thing. So if you need to ever increase a fraction or a proportion in unit terms, you say you increase it by one percentage point. So if I were to increase whatever they've called this variable, if I were to increase that by one percentage point, on average, my y variable, whatever that is, increases by beta one. That's what that is. So please, please, please make sure you know the difference between percentage point and percentages. So that was my video on that. Hopefully now, if you ever get any questions on that, this is really easy. You just need to memorize that table. Anyway, stay tuned for more from me. Bye guys.